oil springs in Europe, Bulgaria holds 40% of them. So this is really quite an amazing place. Uh, some of you might have been in, to Sofia, and if you went on a walking tour, you probably saw the public baths. It's quite a lovely building, under renovation now for the past 40 years. They finally started a few weeks ago. Uh, and then there's another one just outside of Sofia, the mineral baths in Bankia. Um, and also a very famous for the water that we're drinking, I think, comes from Bankia. So try it, see if you like it. And then also, of course, there's the uh, Riva Monastery. And if you do the tour, I understand for accompanying persons to go to the monastery. It's really worthwhile. It's up in the mountains, it's secluded, it's lovely. And uh, it was founded by um, Ivan Rishi uh, about the 10th century, 9th to 10th century. And he was a hermit, and he lived in a cave up in the mountains. And we're told, legend has it, that he survived on the water alone, plus a few areas here and there. So eventually he, he became a saint, and this place has been uh, preserved, moved from one spot to another and preserved. For Sometimes. So he's a national hero. Now we also have our heroes in water science, and um, I'm not sure of your heroes, but I have a few, and I just wanted to mention those. And the first, of course, is Albert St. George, who uh, was many called Albert St. George, the father of modern biochemistry, and I, I think that's true. And Jim Osmond here was a student of Albert St. George, so he might have a few words to say about his mentor. And he's famous for so many interesting and powerfully penetrating books. And one of them is Life is Water, Dancing to the Tune of Solids. Another hero, at least one of my heroes, is Gilbert Ling. And this famous picture was taken when he was about 27 years old. He's now older than 27. He's uh, uh, in his mid-90s and still quite active. And for me, he was he was a real uh, mentor. And Gilbert's main contribution was to, in his five books that he produced, to demonstrate that the water inside the cell, widely believed to just be H2O, uh, ordinary uh, water, it's actually ordered, uh, very highly ordered water inside the cell, and for that he became a pariah. And he challenged many of the views in, in cell biology. At one time, he was popular, but Gradually, he lost ground. His stuff is really interesting to read. And then there's Jacques Benvenis, who was a, a friend of mine and also one of my heroes in terms of fighting the establishment. And I think most of you, or many of you, know that, that Jacques was responsible for creating the, the term of water memory. And water memory holds an almost sacred place among the people here because there are many experiments that will be presented, have been presented in previous meetings that confirm what, what you found. However, this result was not popular among, especially among the French establishment. Uh, you know, the, the towering achievements of many of the uh, French people seem to be in an instant destroyed by Jacques Benveniste's in war of memory. And uh, many of the people feel indebted to the pioneer indebted to the pioneering work of Jacques. Though it's true that water is a field beset with controversy, and there was also the specter of powder water. I know we have quite a few Russians here, perhaps the Russians remember. Boris Deryagin was uh, the most famous physical chemist in all of Russia, and uh, he became famous for some for many things, but one of them was, was uh, poly water, that is, water that was evaporated, condensed into capillary tubes, and it had peculiar properties that seemed most unlike water. In fact, it seemed to be a polymer of, of water, and that's why it was called, actually, by Americans coined the name poly water. And it turned into a uh, uh, big controversy. In fact, some of the journalists in the US said that this is so dangerous, this stuff, that if you took just a, a thimble full of this stuff, and you threw it into the water, the entire water would polymerize and it would destroy life on the earth. So that was another controversy. We, we had that in, in the early 1970s and the uh, memory of water was 20 years later and now it's about
about 20 years later waiting for another one to show its head, another debacle. So our goal is, of course, to uncover the secrets of water. We want to find out the dynamic behavior of these uh, enigmatic uh, molecules. And not, not just the behavior of single molecules, or small numbers of molecules, uh, which are highly uh, studied using computational methods, but we're really interested in, in the social behavior of water molecules and how ensembles sitting near the bar, uh, how, how they behave uh, with respect to one another. And um, so, so that's what the meeting is really, really all about. And I want to extend a hearty welcome to, uh, to all of you. I know that people have come from far away. Uh, there are Europeans. Uh, we have at least two or three from South America. Uh, U.S. people, Asia, Japan, I think perhaps China, even France, uh, and Luke. And from basically from all over. Africa? Do we have anybody from Africa? Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, Australia? Have we covered all the continents almost? <laughs> okay. How many of you have been to Australia? Okay. So, many of you have been to previous conferences. I think perhaps a half of you, this is your, your first uh, conference, and I want to extend a, a warm welcome to you, and I hope that this is going to be a meeting that you really enjoy. We have a new, for those of you who have been here before, we have a few new features. The first feature is a feature film that you see this afternoon. And only one person, Konstantin Karakov, has seen it. And, but many of the people in this audience are actually stars of this film. So you may see some interesting folks who you know. Another feature is the, uh, the poster presentation. Well, they're not new, but we have three minutes capsule poster descriptions before the poster session. That way you can get some idea of the menu that's being offered and you can decide which poster you'd really like to see. We also have music at some of the events and this will be local Hungarian music. Uh, I, I want to extend thanks to the local uh, organizers, uh, now Jenny Germanov, where are you? Okay. Uh, somewhere. Oh, okay. Is this possible? So the two of them are across. And almost equally, uh, Maya and Tina. Maya, are you here? Maya. And you've all dealt with that. So a bit more enthusiasm. Uh, she's done great. She's done a really good job. And Anton? Anton, where are you? Anton has done all the way. We want to, to thank the, the sponsors, and, um, and one of them is uh, Germanov, and also the uh, Bulgarian contingent. The Bulgarians are really interested uh, in water, and there's a group of them who have helped the uh, locals to, to put on this meeting because they, they consider water to be the equivalent to Bulgarian gold. Mm -hmm. um, it's their, it's their, their gold, their, their main feature. I also uh, want to thank the hotel, uh, Samokov, who have cooperated to put this together in a really nice way. So, and also I should mention um, that uh, Luc Montagnier, who just came in, Luc got one special medal uh, yesterday. It was called the Medal of Honor from the Bulgarian Parliament and for helping the uh, Bulgarian nurses who were stranded in Libya. And he was instrumental in getting them free, and some of you remember that. So I think we owe uh, a round of applause. <laughs> okay, there, there are some program changes. Um, um, several people have, have dropped out, and uh, I think you, you may have realized this. And it's some of our colorful, the more colorful uh, uh, speakers. I just want to mention two. One of them is Pat Flanagan. This is what Pat sometimes looks like, and other times he looks like this. <laughs> Uh, and he's responsible for the book on pyramid power and many other things related to water. And unfortunately, Patrick has some fairly rare disease, but he's going to conquer it and he'll be back next year. So you'll see him then. And the other is Masaru Imoto, who is lying in bed with pneumonia in a Japanese hospital. 
So we all, we all wish him well. And I think uh, everybody probably here knows about his work on crystals and the effect of sounds and intentions. And sounds are really important. And uh, in honor, uh, I, I just wanted to present something that we had the experience of in, enjoying a few days ago and we're really mesmerized. And a lot of you have seen this before. This is a, these spouting bowls, and basically it's the effect of sound. And I'm showing this because of Emoto, just to show if the video works. Um, so you take the bowl, and these are from the Ming Dynasty in, in China, and uh, he's pointing out the uh, nodes and anti nodes that are somehow uh, responsible for this. It, the sound, um, I guess you won't hear the sound. Uh, it's okay. You have to wash your hands. And uh, my wife and I tried this in Lindau with one of these. It's really amazing if you haven't seen it before. So you essentially you rub the handles, and uh, what you see is that the water droplets form. It's like upside down rain. Uh, it's really amazing to see. And uh, so some of you have played with this as kids, but for others of us, it's it's new and interesting. And I think it really does demonstrate that sound vibrations, just as Emoto has been talking about, do impact the water. On the other hand, I discussed last night with a few of my students, and they said, oh, it's really simple. I'm not sure that the mechanism is really clear. And I heard some rumors that somebody was offering 100 left to figure out the right answer of how exactly do you get this upside down ring. So, anyway, um, I hope you will enjoy the conference. We have some exciting speakers and some almost as exciting. <laughs> um, um, enjoy. Uh, the first speaker, I guess I'll take the liberty of, of introducing. The first speaker is Rupert Sheldrake. And I think some of you know Rupert, others don't. Rupert is not a water scientist. I invited Rupert because I think Rupert is one of the world's great scientists. He studies things that others don't study, and he studies them intensely and thoroughly. He's a controversial fellow, and I must tell you that, uh, well, just to give you one example, those who don't know him, one of his early books is called uh, How Dogs Know Their, what's the title of it? Dogs That Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home. <laughs> uh, that gives you some idea of the kind of things that Rupert studies. So, um, without further 